How's it going everybody? Oliver here for iInfluence. Today I'm going to be answering some of the more common questions that I get asked about blue light as it pertains to the health and well-being of our eyes. I wanted to make this video and it's important that we make it because there are people that are believers, there are doubters, there are those that are on the fence, and then there are those that simply do not know about blue light. And so maybe they're just looking to get some information before they make a purchase. Uh, maybe they're looking to get some blue light filtering glasses, but they're not too sure what blue light even is. So that is what this video is going to be for. I'm going to have all the answers that you need coming right up. So before I get to the first question, I just want to encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. On this channel, we provide lots of information and resources to help you take care of the health of your eyes and the quality of your vision. And then after you finish watching the video, please, I encourage you to visit iInfluence.org. We have lots of articles, product comparisons, and many other things in regards to blue light, digital eye strain that can help you out to take care of the health of your eyes. Now, without any more delay, let's get to answering some questions. So the first and most commonly asked question is, what is blue light anyways? Blue light, also commonly known as high energy visible light, is generally defined as light ranging from 380 to 500 nanometers. To put it into context, all visible light, the entire spectrum, is from 380 to 700 nanometers. So blue light represents about one third of all visible light. That is a pretty big chunk of all the light that we could see. So blue light is pretty much everywhere. That leads us to question number two. Where is blue light found? By far the largest source of blue light is from the sun itself. That's where we're getting a whole bunch of that blue light exposure, but we also get it from man-made light sources such as LED light bulbs, fluorescent bulbs, your flat screen TV, your tablet, your cell phone, all these digital devices that you have in your hand and keep in your house all emit blue light. Question number three is another very common question that I receive, which is what harm can blue light do to me? So I wanna start off by answering this question generally first. So generally speaking, if you are outside and if you're not wearing any sunglasses on a bright sunny day, you're not wearing a hat, nothing else to really protect your eyes from not just blue light, but the ultraviolet light, then you could be bringing on things such as cataracts, age-related macular degeneration, and retina damage. Those are just some of the things that could happen as a result of too much exposure to not just blue light, but ultraviolet light in general. So you always wanna take care of your eyes when you're outside. Now, to be very specific now, if we're talking about the blue light exposure that you get from digital devices, unfortunately, there isn't any data yet that says these digital devices like a tablet, cell phone, a computer monitor, laptop screen, or your TV, that it's pushing out enough blue light to hurt your eyes in the same way that the sun would. There just isn't enough data to back that up. There's nothing to say that it is enough to cause cataracts, age-related macular degeneration, or retina damage. Now, of course, it all depends. I'm not saying that, you know, forget about all these computer glasses or blue light filtering glasses or protecting your eyes from the blue light that's emitted from there. I'm just saying there isn't enough data. There's no proof to say that there's enough blue light coming out of these devices to harm your eyes in that way, okay? From a health perspective, the health of your eyes. Blue light has gotten a bit of a bad rap recently. There's a whole lot of things that are being said of the negative effects, but the truth is blue light is necessary. Light in general, of course, but blue light, what it helps us to do is to maintain our circadian rhythm. Now, the circadian rhythm is like a, a natural clock that we have inside of us, which is triggered or receives a cue from light in the morning, right? So when we receive that light through our eyes in the morning, it triggers something in our brains to say, hey, it's time to get up, time to be active. Then when that light goes away, it's another cue telling our bodies, okay, it's time to start calming down, time to start relaxing. Different parts of our brain are gonna function in a different way when there's less light than when there's more. So the circadian rhythm is triggered in many ways and maintained by the amount of blue light that we receive or light in general, but blue light has a really big influence and I'm gonna to get to that in a little bit. So blue light as a whole is not bad. We don't want to eliminate it all. But just because I said that, don't think that the blue light that's getting emitted from these digital devices is all good. As a matter of fact, what there is evidence of plenty of evidence is that the blue light getting emitted from these digital devices is enough to influence and throw off our circadian rhythm. 
So I'm going to tell you something that's really going to open everything up now, okay? You see, whenever there's a disruption to our body's natural rhythm, that's when a lot of health issues start to arise. There is a lot of scientific data that links a disruption to our body's natural rhythm to health conditions such as obesity, diabetes, insomnia, depression, dementia, and a few other things. So it's not as simple as saying, oh, it's not enough blue light to really cause my eyes any harm. Well, the thing is you may not be seeing it in the health of your eyes. You're gonna see the effects of overexposure to that blue light in other areas of your life, in other areas of your body's well-being. Let me give you a quick summary, the way that I understood this, the way that I was able to really get a picture of how this all works and how I pieced it all together. As less light enters our eyes, it serves as a cue, right? So our circadian rhythm is being maintained because less light is coming through. That internal clock within us is saying, okay, less light is coming through, time to start winding down, we're gonna be resting soon, right? But it also serves as a cue for our brain to release a hormone which is called melatonin. Now, melatonin is a hormone which influences a lot of different systems within our body, and that's released by our brain, and a certain amount of it is released primarily at night when there is less light, once again, because there has been a signal, a cue, a notice sent to our brain that it's time to send out that hormone because it's gonna start calming down our bodies, cooling our system down, and different things are gonna start working. There was a study that showed that just one hour of exposure to the blue light on a digital device reduced the melatonin in your body by 23%. 23% with just one hour. Now, of course, that is something that naturally decreases as we age, so not everybody is gonna have the same amount of melatonin throughout their entire life being released at the exact same time. It's actually something that goes down as we age, so that's why elderly patients will have less melatonin in their system, regardless of whether or not they're on a digital device, but nonetheless, it is something that we need to be aware of. So, less melatonin, greater health problems because melatonin is actually influencing a lot of the other systems in our body. It is important for us eye care professionals, which I'm not a optometrist or an ophthalmologist, but I am an optician, and I do play a big part in the decisions that consumers and patients make in regards to the things that they purchase to take care of the health of their eyes. It is important for us to know that this is something that we may not notice on our end at first. On the surface, it's simply not gonna be caught, and I'm not saying that this is something that's intentionally being ignored. This is something that's really new for a lot of us in this eye care profession, and when new things come out, be quite honest, at first it sounds like a gimmick. It sounds like just another thing that these manufacturers are trying to sell, especially when representatives that come in are simply not informed enough. They come in with, a data sheet or some spec sheet and saying, look, this is the damage that is being caused by the blue light exposure. You don't know what you're talking about half the time and that's why eye care professionals don't stand behind it. They don't know how to inform the patient because you, the representatives and manufacturers of these products, simply don't know how to present the information. And that's why I think that this video is gonna be really useful not only for consumers, but to you, the manufacturers of these products, to inform your representatives to properly discuss the effects of blue light. It's my responsibility as an optician to tell people, hey, you need to protect your eyes. You need to know why blue light is important to get filtered out at certain times of the day in certain ways and of a certain amount. You don't want to eliminate all blue light from your life. And it's crazy to think that something as simple as a smartphone could throw you off and have health related issues like obesity, diabetes, dementia, insomnia, and a whole plethora of other things that could happen, but it's true. So I think we all need to do a better job of educating ourselves on the real side effects, the chain reaction that occurs with blue light exposure. The more information we have, especially for those of us that are on the front line, taking care of people's eyes, we need to encourage them to protect their eyes from blue light, especially during certain hours of the day when those cues are necessary for a mind to release those necessary hormones that our body really depends on to maintain that internal clock. So let's start winding this down and get to question number four, which is who is the most susceptible? The truth is anybody that's on a digital device, cell phone, tablet, computer screen, laptop, whatever it may be, you are susceptible to those side effects, that chain reaction that happens when you expose yourself to that blue light during late evening hours. So you wanna make sure that you cut down on the amount of time that you're spending on those digital devices, 
late at night. You want to allow your mind to have those cues. And that is where I would say you might want to consider getting something to filter out some blue light. I'm going to go as far as to say this. I think that there is an ideal time for you to wear a set of glasses that is going to be filtering out blue light or in other ways trying to reduce the amount of blue light that you're getting exposed to, which leads us to question number five. What should you do to protect yourself? Now, a lot of people are going to assume that I'm going to say that the number one thing that you should do is purchase a set of glasses that filters out blue light. And though I've made product reviews for all these different computer glasses, and though I do believe that they help, I don't think that that's the only option. I'm not going to be here and and say that the computer glasses or glasses that filter out blue light, whatever they want to market it as, are going to be your number one option. There are lots of free options especially when I'm saying that the best time to filter out blue light is going to be in the late evening hours. Switch your phone or tablet into night mode. There is a popular free software that you could download called Flux. That's F dot L U X. If you wanted to Google it, it's a free program. Essentially the way that the program works is that it is synced to your time zone so that when the sun is supposed to be out and bright, your screen matches that. And as the sun starts to set, so does your screen. It's not that it's going to completely turn off, but it will start to shift in color. It's going to start to reduce the amount of blue light that's getting emitted from your laptop. I had that installed on my laptop and I think that is very useful. Personally, I prefer a set of computer glasses because I'm not a big fan of that sepia tone that comes out, you know, when you shift into night mode or anything like that. So a set of computer glasses that filters out blue light will have less influence on the way that color looks on your screen. And that might be something that you care about, which I do, but I'm not here to say that you need to buy a $100 set of blue light filtering glasses because there are plenty of options out there free. There are some that are $12, $40, some that are over $100. There's lots of options. It really depends on what you need to do. Thank you so much for sticking through this video. I hope you enjoyed the information that you found on here. If it was useful to you, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Visit iInfluence.org. I have a follow-up article to this on our website. You're going to get a lot more information than just this. We have product comparisons and reviews, all sorts of different things. iInfluence.org. Thank you so much for watching this video. Once again, I am Oliver for iInfluence. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day.